Hello, welcome to advanced composites course. Today is the second day of the first week of this course and what we will discuss today uh, is uh, different types of fibers and viscous which are used in composites for reinforcing the material. So, <coughs> I used these two terms fibers and viscous. So, first we will discuss what are fibers and then very quickly we will also cover this term known as viscous. So, what is fiber? It is, so we can have different types of fibers in composites. We can have glass fiber or graphite fiber, Kevlar fiber or we can have metallic fibers that are fibers made up of steel or uh, titanium and so on and so forth. But if we have to define fiber, then what is fiber? it has two features. One is that it is length to diameter ratio L by D ratio is very, very large compared to 1. So, you have a diameter and maybe several thousand times if it is uh, the length then you have uh, you call it a fiber. And, but it does not mean that you will, st you can have any diameter. Okay. So, a rod will also have a large L by D ratio, but then the diameter has to be sufficiently small. So, diameter should be approximately same as crystal size of the material. So, it has to be sufficiently thin. So, a rod is not same as a fiber even though it has a very large L by D ratio, but it the diameter has to be fairly small and the fact and when the diameter becomes approximately, approximately same as that of the crystal size, then what we start seeing is that the strength of the fiber starts improving significantly. And the reason is that if you have a thick fiber, let us say its diameter is 5000 times the crystal size, then you may have several crystals lying along parallel to each other and there may be a lot of defects between different crystals. And as a consequence of these defects, the bond between these crystals which are parallel to each other in the thickness direction they may be very weak. So, if you pull the thing it may rip off and it may break, but if the diameter starts approaching the crystal size then all the crystals they start aligning with each other very well and they are connected with strong molecular intermolecular bonds or at crystal level and as a consequence the breaking strength of the fiber is significantly larger than the breaking strength of the same material, but which is available in bulk form. So, you may have a glass fiber and it may break at a particular uh, stress level and you consider the same glass in a bulk level and you will find that it fails at a much lesser value. And sometimes the ratio of this strength could be as much as 200 to 1000. So, this is an important observation which we look at and we take advantage of. So, if we use uh, a lot of fibers essentially if I use a lot of glass fibers I may get a composite which may be stronger than uh, glass bulk material itself. So, with this background let us look at some of the properties of different uh, fibers. So, we will have I will quickly develop a table. So, you have fiber and then I will say that what is its 
bulk tensile strength bulk tensile strength and then we have the tensile strength uh, at fiber level fiber tensile strength okay so we'll just quickly look at some fibers so the first one could be fiber made of aluminum and its bulk tensile strength in mpa is anywhere between 140 to 620 but if you test the thing at the fiber level it's pretty close to 620 so the material is much more cons consistent so then the next one is let's look at glass and there are different types of glass fibers so this is e glass fiber bulk strength is somewhere between 70 to 210 MPa, but if you look at the fiber strength it is 3500 MPa okay. and if you take another glass let us say S glass its bulk strength is again 70 to 210, but if you look at its fiber and you try to break it, it breaks at very high stress level about 4600 MPa or 4.6 GPa. And then we will look at another very popular fiber made from carbon graphite fiber. And if you take graphite and you try to break it, it will break at almost no load. Okay. So, it is very low because there are lots of defects in, 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 in between flakes. And but if you look at its fiber strength, then it could be anywhere from 2.1 to 2.5 GPa or 2100 to uh, 2500 GPa. And lastly, we will look at steel and steel's breaking strength in bulk form. So, this could be anywhere between 200 to 340 MPa, but at the fiber level it will break something at much elevated values about 4.1 GPa. So, this gives you an idea that if you use fibers and if you use a lot of fibers then you can make a product stronger than it would be uh, when you use the same material in its bulk form because they are stronger and because of this a lot of times composites have a very high strength to density ratio that for the same amount of mass you can have much stronger structures. So, the other term which I used was viscous and these viscous are very similar to fibers, but the difference is that they are even thinner they are even thinner than fibers and they have even higher properties even better properties than uh, fibers. So, let us look at some of the viscous uh, strengths. So, we will have material and then we will look at their bulk strength. and then viscous strength okay so we will start with alumina so you can actually make visca from alumina and its bulk strength is about 105 to 107 but its viscous strength is extremely high 19000 MPa. Okay. Another would be copper. So, copper is about 220 it breaks at about 220 MPa, but you look at its viscous it goes up to about 3 GPa. 
so about 15 times stronger silicon carbide silicon carbide it breaks at about 3440 MPa or 3.4 GPa, but at whisker level it fails at 11 GPa and then we will look at carbon again a very low, but whisker strength if you compare. So, the fiber strength was how much 4100 MPa or 4 uh, it was about 2100 MPa, 2100 to 2500 MPa. So, about 2 to 2.5 GPa and the Vistra strain does not change much, but it is in the same range 2500 and we will take two more examples, so that you have a good perspective. So, one is E glass. So, E glass is 70 to 210 and its strength is at whisker level is about 3500 and then finally, we will talk about titanium, titanium alloy it breaks at about 1040 and its whisker strength is 1900 MPa. I messed up with some numbers because this graphite is actually very high, it is about 21000 okay. and this data is incorrect. So, these are four sample materials and they give you some idea as to how viscous strength of different materials can be very high. So, the point is that using these types of properties at micro level, we exploit their superior properties, their higher strength, higher modulus and things like that and using that we are able to engineer tailor made materials which make meet our requirement. So, this is the overall view and what are the different types of advantages we may get out of composite materials. So, let very uh, let us very quickly review. So, I can engineer a composite material to provide me benefits and what could be those benefits they could be. So, it all depends on how I engineer the material. So, it would be a strength weight I can have very light composites. So, weight uh, stiffness and in this context specifically I would want to say that less stiffness to mass ratio and again in context of strength also I can say that less strength to oh, high, st uh, high stiffness to mass ratio and high strength to mass ratio. So, I can engineer that then I can engineer materials to improve their thermal conductivity electrical conductivity uh, toughness a very good example of a very tough material is Kevlar and that is why they use it for a lot of bullet proof uh, applications, bullet proof jackets and things like that. Wear resistance, okay. so you can have toughness, you can wear resistance, uh, temperature resistance. moisture resistance ultraviolet uv resistance ultraviolet resistance and so on and so forth so again a single material may not give you all these properties 
but if you know exactly what your functional requirements are then you can engineer a particular composite material to a particular goal. So, this completes our second uh, lecture for the week and tomorrow we will start discussing the mechanical behavior of different types of composite materials in not necessarily in a mathematical sense, but initially we will start discussing in a qualitative sense and then slowly we will move into the mathematics of different types of uh, relations which govern behavior of composite materials. So, with that we close for today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you.